If you look at every one of the great figures that is shaping the global conversation today, they are all futurists to some degree. They're not Luddites in love with the past. They're not existentialists in love with the present. They are all future-minded people. And being a future-minded person doesn't mean you know what the trends are. It doesn't mean you sit there all day with your iPad and you, you know, you're cooked up to the web and you figure out what all the latest trends are. That's not what it means. Being a future-minded person means you can see the likely emerging need in response to the trends. So as the world changes, what are the needs that people are likely to feel? How do we meet those needs in advance? That's where our influence comes from. How many of you have an iPhone tonight? How many of you would like to have an iPhone? How many of you don't even know what an iPhone is? <laughs> At least you're honest. This thing's only three years old and already there have been five billion application downloads for this machine, 181,000 different applications written by individuals, some of whom make 150,000 American dollars a year just on the back of one application. Incredible. Incredible. But if you had done a market research survey five years before this came out, you would have found hardly any of those applications came up as pressing human needs. Nobody was saying five years ago, I really need something on my phone to help me turn my car on or unlock my door. I really need something on my phone to help me find my way from the car to the restaurant, which is just over there anyway. But somebody saw and recognised that new technologies present new possibilities and new possibilities give birth to new needs. Are you still with me? It's about whether or not we can see the likely human need in response to the trends and respond accordingly. 